Tonight, we'll be discussing videotaping police officers. We'll also be taking a look at bad teachers over in the United Kingdom. More stories about police, plus a new law in the state of Massachusetts that could make vast swaths of the internet illegal. All that, plus a whole lot more, coming up tonight on Free Minds TV. And welcome to episode 165 of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. It is Toby here with you. And Nick. All right, Nick, we are going to be getting into a few different stories about police officers this evening, as well as looking at some bad teachers over the in the UK. It looks like the, the people in charge over there think bad teachers can actually be good for pupils. So we'll be getting into that, as well as a law in Massachusetts that may make the entire internet illegal. Well, not the higher internet. Potentially. There's some sites that would be pretty strong. How can one legislative body make the internet illegal? We'll be getting into that in the second half of tonight's show. But first, it is a story we've touched on before, Nick. It's also a story that is very, very important. Filming the police. They don't really like to be filmed. They don't want, at least some of them it seems, really don't want the public to see what they're doing, uh, to videotape them doing their job, supposedly doing this public service, if you will. Uh, in New Hampshire, as where we're broadcasting from, as well as many other states that we are, um, the show is on, it is illegal to film police officers. And this isn't just going to be giving you some kind of a violation, a ticket, or a misdemeanor. It's actually, here in New Hampshire, it's a felony. In other states, it's a felony as well because, well, apparently, the state wants police officers to be able to arrest you if they see fit that you should not videotape them. Um, this has got, uh, we've been discussing it, Nick, recently a lot because it's been happening more and more, not only here in New Hampshire, but stories all over the place have been popping up where citizens are being arrested simply for filming a police officer, uh, for collecting evidence. I'm not sure if that's because there, there's a change in attitude so much as cameras have become so ubiquitous. I mean, they're everywhere. Right. Most people well, who have a cell phone mm -hmm. have the capacity to, to take video. And let's just uh, point out that most of these laws were created in the 1970s. We've talked about this before. They were actually created to protect private citizens, oftentimes from the government. Um, and they were wiretapping laws before video ta uh, cameras were in the public's hands. Uh, they, these laws were really specifically for audio conversations. They're being extended to filming police officers, and then the, the catch is that there's also an audio component there as well. Uh, it should be noted, though, that these laws were created quite a while ago cool. and are now being used oftentimes for different purposes. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not positive on this. Um, this may have been another state I'm thinking about, but I believe that the New Hampshire statute was changed to provide an exemption for law enforcement officers when things like dash cams started becoming popular. So originally it was designed to protect citizens from things like broad wiretapping. It was supposed to be a protection from unreasonable search and seizure, but police today can videotape you with their dash cams, yep. without your consent, without notification, and you cannot film the police. So it's been turned around and used against the citizenry when it was originally intended to protect citizens from government overreach and from police overreach. That was the original intention of the law. The reason it was a felony was because it was supposed to deter people in government from wiretapping right. you. Not, not in case a right. citizen wanted to film somebody who supposedly works for them. Seems crazy though, Nick, because I mean, I know we've got a couple of stories to highlight some of these things. There's also been a few articles uh, published uh, uh, slamming police forces for this, or at least the police who agree with this, the police unions, they certainly well, uh, oftentimes agree The legislature with this. isn't being hit hard enough either though, because as mm -hmm. much as I might fault the police officers for actually enforcing it, Ultimately, it's the legislature's fault right. for keeping the law on the books. And it's been challenged in New, here in New Hampshire and in many other states, but it's always the police un unions and uh, law enforcement agencies, Nick, that step out in front and say, no, we need to be uh, able to arrest citizens for filming police doing their duties. Now, any good police officer out there worth their salt will know that um, additional videotaping evidence, uh, additional uh, audio is only going to help them so long as they're doing their job, so long as they're following the rules, so long as they're not roughing people up, uh, arresting people, people illegally, etc., etc. So as long as the police officers are doing their job properly, they want more cameras. That's all as evidence to be used against the suspects if they're doing something wrong. It's only a bad police officer 
who would want uh, this kind of thing suppressed, who would want less cameras, who want a dark room to do their business in. That's, that's just the sketchy, the, the bad police officers. Yet time and time again, every time this pops up, the police unions argue against it. Now I want to, as we've done every time we do this show, it almost looks like a repeat, do want to say there are a lot of police officers who appreciate more video cameras out there because they are good police officers. They do want to be on the record, on the job, on the record. But it's the bad ones that are painting a bad name for all of them. Now, as I mentioned, there are some um, op-eds and stuff talking about how slamming uh, the, the, these laws because they're ridiculous. I mean, it's one of those issues that it seems 90, 95% of the public agree on it, that th these laws need to be wiped off the, bo uh, the books and people should be allowed to film police. Yet, for some reason, every single week, Nick, I'm seeing more and more our, um, news stories popping up from here in New Hampshire and all around the country in these states for people being arrested for filming the police. And there was another bigger one um, here in New Hampshire that I think you've got some more details on. Yeah, it's coming uh, from Newcastle. Um, a Newcastle man was arrested at an Independence Day 4th of July party um, and he was charged with a count of wiretapping. It's alleged they used his cell phone to film the police response. Um, a press release about the party where 20 people were charged did not disclose the wiretapping arrest, but police confirmed Tuesday that Adam H. Whitman, age 20, of Newcastle, was arrested for wiretapping. However, the charge is likely to be dismissed and or replaced with another charge, possibly disorderly conduct or obstructing government administration, said Captain Mike Schwartz. So apparently the police, uh, police from a number of towns, Newcastle, Rye, Greenland, and New Hampshire State troopers were involved in busting up this party of approximately, they say, 30 kids. About 20 people were charged, although most of them were 19 or 20. Yeah, so now, Nick, this is adults, a perfect example just... of where a video camera would come in very handy for the police officer's benefit, right, if they're doing their job, because you're talking about a party situation where there's a whole lot of stuff going on. There's not just one suspect. There's all sorts of people, all sorts of stuff going on. You would think that the police officers would want more evidence. They're arresting, you said 20 people or something. They're yeah. arresting a whole bunch of people in a party atmosphere. Why would they not want the evidence showing what was going on at the party? Why do they want to cover this up? I well, just really don't understand, Nick. Unless the police are doing something wrong, why do they want less evidence? It's a very good question. I mean, I think part of it might be that this kind of police response isn't terribly popular. As much as, you, I'm not going to say that a majority or anything of people out there necessarily support a lower drinking age, but usually when you see police arresting 20-year-olds for drinking on private property, people, I, I think generally there's a sense out there that that's not really necessary, it's not a particularly good law, and people don't really that's see the need for most, these police responses. Not everybody, but most people out there had a drink or two before they were 21 in the United States. It's and amazing, these, isn't and it? Yet, when yet, you're 20, you're an adult. <laughs> right. A lot of people at age 20 are having children. Yep. They're in the workforce, in the military. So I, I think a lot of people find it very strange that you can vote, serve on the police force, serve in the general court, in the legislature, and people do who are under the age of 21, but you can't drink a beer. Okay. It seems very un-American. So I think to some extent, so it's police so don't like to look like Goons. They don't like to look like the, you know, like the people, like the kinds of officers that people don't so like. They don't the want to look like goons, like. so they become bigger goons. That's, that's kind of. That's, that's kind of. Some sick. officers do. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to look like a like a piece of crap, so I'm going to act like a bigger piece of crap. Yeah. In this I case, know. I think that's pretty much what the officers did. Now, in this case, what the officers are claiming was that the person filming was riling up the crowd, they were being disruptive to people actually making arrests. So, so that's evidence against them, Nick, for whatever disorderly right, conduct or right. something. You would disorderly think, conduct you would think may well fit. Would I wasn't that, there. Though. Right. I mean, you would think, you would think that the more. video would not be the element they went after. Right. You would think that they would only encourage people who are breaking the law uh -huh. by obstructing an arrest. Continue videotaping. Please video it's going to be used against you. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you, including that videotape you're using. Not, Stop filming, or we're going to arrest you for that and charge you with a felony. It's yeah, a felony. It it, it's completely, it's completely inappropriate. I've the never. Itself is completely I have, what's the argument for it? I mean, I just, I don't understand what they're. I've never heard a coherent argument arguing for this being illegal. 
I, I because just, they don't want you to, and they're the police, and they're better than you. That's a, it's not a coherent argument. That's the the, the gist of the arguments that I've heard. Well, Nick, I do. I, I know that we've we do need to move on to other stories. I did want to mention it though because these stories keep on popping up more and more and more. And until the laws are changed, I think it's important to continue reporting on yeah, these stories, I think to it continue was... pointing it out. Because a lot of people, I don't think they understand that this is going on. That in some cases, people are being threatened with up to 16 years in jail for filming police on their own private property. Sounds like something that should happen in Iran or North Korea, right. not in the United States. And you, would so, be, you would be facing over a decade in jail. For filming police, not only in right. public, but on your own private property in some cases. Yeah, that's what happened in Nashville back in 2006. I think it's an editorial from the union leader. We didn't really have time to get into it, but they cited the case, I think it was of Michael Gagnon. The charges yeah, against him were eventually dropped, but he was filming the police when they interviewed his son. And I think the police even, they were informed that there were cameras, yep. but they didn't explicitly consent, but they right. continued the interview in this man's home. He was filming in his kitchen or something. Yep. And, and they he charged had a big him with sign a that felony. says, warning, you're on camera. Yeah, and they charged him with a felony, but, even with informed consent. Yeah, it's going I, well, on everywhere, informed consent, But they were informed, and they walked in, sat down, and continued the interview. It, Seems like consent to me. It is sick. It is disgusting. And we're going to continue. This won't be the last time we report it on it, I'm sure, because, well, while it's coming up for debate again, well, how's your representative going to vote on this? Because last time, chances are... They voted it down because last year it didn't go through. So chances are your representative is a piece of crap. I'm sorry. Just chances are. All right. Moving right along, i got to talk about other pieces of crap. He's one's over in the UK. And you know what? This is a, an article about bad teachers. And while I know some, there's the, – the point of the article isn't about to slam teachers or anything like that. That's not what I want to do. I work in a school. My wife's a teacher. Uh, I, I'm not trying to slam teachers. What I'm trying to slam – is this whole concept of who cares how good someone is at their job, let them th keep their job. This is coming from the BBC, um, where children can learn from bad teachers. Now, they not, might not learn the subject matter, but they'll learn a life lesson. It is, quote, this is coming from the BBC, it is not an absolute disaster if schools contain bad teachers, the chairman of the Office of Standards in Education has told the BBC. And uh, Zena Atkins stressed that these are her personal views and earlier told the Times that, quote, every school should have a useless teacher. Hmm. This is the chairman for the Office of Standards in Education says every single school should have a useless teacher. She said that, quote, in society there are people you don't like, there are people who are incompetent, and there are often people above you in authority who you think are incompetent. And learning the ability to, de to deal with that and actually survive in the environment can be an advantage. Well, yeah, but then you still have teachers giving, teaching young children bad things. She even acknowledges that. She says that um, at a very young age, really poor teachers can be damaging. I've seen that happen time and time again where they have crushed children. Yet she thinks it's important for these teachers to stay on the job even though they, quote, have crushed children. Seems weird, doesn't it? Uh, uh, and in fact, in BBC, uh, in, oh, I'm sorry, over in the UK, it's a little bit more difficult to get bat rid of uh, bad employees. I know it can be very, very difficult all over, especially after they get tenure in the United States. But it, apparently, it's even worse over in the UK. Last week, the BBC revealed that 18 UK teachers have been struck off or fired for incompetence in the past 40 years. Not very many of them. 18 the entire in a nation of 60 million? Yeah, despite in, the fact- In four decades? In four decades, despite the fact that there are over 17,000 teachers who should, quote, not be on the job. Currently, currently. Not, over the last 40 years, yes. there have to have been many times that amount. For, You're 17, talking about a fraction of a thousand. Well, you know why, Nick? Because the people in like leadership- the, the people in leadership, probably one in ten thousand. The teachers standard like for that, education. The people career. who are in charge of the standards for education over there, this Zena Atkins thinks that every school needs a bad teacher or two, because they'll teach uh, children that no, life sucks and absurd. you just deal with it. Give me a break. She thinks that children should be crushed at a very young age. But you know what teaches children besides crushing them at a very young age? Good teachers, yeah, really teaching, good teachers, and, teaching, and an enthused teacher who knows what they're doing, who wants to 
help a student learn, to help shape a student into a productive person. And well, what about person. the life lesson that's being pointed out here? Because I don't think it's a good life lesson to tell people, oh, if you're working for or with somebody who's incompetent, you should just put up with it. Because essentially that's what you have to do when you're a student. Wouldn't it be a much better life lesson if you were a child in an English school, and if you did have a really incompetent teacher, if they got fired with no notice whatsoever? Because that's what happens in the real world. At least well, it used to be. Anymore, not anymore, Nick. Not anymore. It's probably worse because in the UK. Because the real world, Nick, in 40 years, 17 teachers no, out of 17,000. Okay, that's government work <laughs> in the UK. But what I'm saying is, at least if you work in private enterprise in the United States, if you're useless, you're going to get fired. It's a lot harder now than it used to be because apparently it's acceptable to be somewhat useless. Like it's just expected that you just show up late, don't do your job, and that's okay somehow. Bad. Probably because of teachers like this. They probably didn't get the life lesson that, well, when Mr. So-and-so, Mr. Smith, didn't do his job, they fired him. Yeah. And then he lost his house. No, it's because like, that's what happens yep. in the real world. It really is. You know what? It's a lot of kid, kids, a lot of kids, Nick, they learn, they have developed life lessons from abusive households. Does that mean every kid needs an abusive parent in a household? Yeah, you could get something good out of being beaten as a child now, for I, no reason. How can this woman still have a job? Anyways, baffles my mind, Nick. When we come back, we are going to be talking about uh, some pretty stupid police officers, as well as getting into a Massachusetts law that deems the internet illegal. All that and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. This is Free Minds TV. <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. This is Mark Edge from Free Talk Live, and you're watching Free Minds TV. And welcome back to Free Minds TV. It still is Toby here with you. And Nick. Log on to our web website, freemindsmedia.org or .com, whichever way you like to go. We'll log you on to there. You'll get all the archives of the show, ways to contact us, ways to help us out, uh, the radio show, and a whole lot more, freemindsmedia.org. All right, Nick, moving right along. We were talking about filming the police um, in the earlier half of the show. Um, now we want to talk about some police officers who, or one particular police officer who, it didn't act in the, with the best judgment. And one more reason, one, one case where it might not be a bad idea to have a camera filming an incident with the police. Uh, an off-duty police officer tackling a 17-year-old boy attempting to enter his own house. Mm -hmm. I could see why there was some confusion here, and I could see why the officer initially had some suspicion. But keep in mind, this story takes place in Nevada. The police officer from Riverside, California. He was off duty, presumably on vacation or something, in street clothes. I, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything that an off duty cop says from out of, out of state. If a Vermont state trooper walks up to me off duty in the state of New Hampshire, I don't care if he shows me his badge and I believe him. He's out of his jurisdiction. He can stuff it or he can call the police like a regular citizen because his badge doesn't mean too much over here. If some guy in street clothes tells me he's a cop and doesn't show me a badge, I'm not going to presume he's a cop. I'm going to presume he's just some guy. Uh, a man claiming to be a police officer from Riverside, California, tackled what he thought was a burglar, only to learn that the 17-year-old was jumping his own fence, according to a police report. Officers were called to the 200 block of Pine Lane about 10.53 p.m. Monday after a neighbor heard one man yelling at another. When Carson City deputies arrived, they found the man holding the teen on the ground. The man said he was an off-duty Riverside police officer. Remember, Riverside's in a different state. No jurisdiction in the state of Nevada that I'm aware of, unless they have reciprocity. And he had observed the teen jump over a six-foot fence into a yard on Pine Lane, according to the report. The man said he confronted the teen, telling him he was an off-duty police officer and to stop. But the teen looked at the man in his shorts, baseball caps, and sleeveless shirt. He wasn't even wearing a t-shirt. He's a wife beater and continued walking away, which is probably what I would have done. There's a very good chance it's a crazy guy. The alleged off-duty officer then grabbed the boy uh, by the arm and escorted him to the ground. I love how they put that. How do you escort? I, uh, you tackle. I don't, think I've, you ever, tackle. I don't <laughs> think I've ever escorted somebody to the ground. You, you tackle. I can the ground, remember right? tackling, and I can remember throwing. I can't remember ever escorting Wrestling. You somebody. can wrestle someone I'm to the gonna ground. I'm going to help you to the ground, sir. Um, you, you look tired. Let, let me escort you to the ground. Let he, me help you He escorted you him to the down. ground <laughs> on his stomach, Yes. the report states. The man held the boy there until police arrived. When deputies arrived, the teen told officers 
Uh, he didn't want to wake his dad, so he used the back door and jumped the fence. Well, this guy screwed that guy over. He's grounded now. The he tried to sneak said, in. The teen said <sighs> when the guy told him to stop, he thought he was joking based on what he looked like. I guess that was the quote. And kept walking. The teen denied any injuries and was free to leave. Well, real quick, Nick. Uh, you, you said before the kid didn't believe him. Oh, you said that if it's, it could be a crazy guy saying, I'm an off-duty police officer. Stop. I think this was a crazy guy. He just happened to be a police officer. Yeah, it happens. Why, what, are you, what are you getting into this business for? I mean, why? You're off duty. Your job is not to protect the world at all times, wherever you are. Well, I could see are. if he thought there was really something going on. Well, call the police. But the man was given in-depth instructions by Carson City deputies to contact dispatch prior to acting in an official capacity in a different state where you're not a police officer. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Anyways, I just wanted to point that out. There's not and, much and to how talk good about of a, there. How good of a cop is he? Because usually if you see a burglar, somebody who's just trying to steal, somebody who's not armed, they don't... you got to catch him in the act so that no, you can get a good conviction, no, Nick. No, no. If you're a police officer, I think you would understand that typically if you're confronted by... I assume the police officer was older than 17. He may have only been in his mid-20s, but he was probably... I'm assuming larger and stronger than the 17-year-old who he tackled to the ground and held there for presumably what was it, several minutes. So usually, if you're actually a burglar and somebody says they're an off-duty cop and tells you to stop, you're not just going to casually walk into the house that you're about to burglarize. Like a real burglar would r try to run away, not just calmly point. walk to their there house. There you go. So it seems kind of odd that he actually thought that something was going on. And not only that, I mean, I, I think that the police officer would almost wait for him to break in because otherwise, what do you have? Trespassing? That's it. There's no right. charges you can't that are really going to stick there. Don't you want to, if there's a burglar on the beat, don't you want some charges to stick against him? I mean, what are you going to get? Right. The most is criminal trespassing, right? Maybe, Maybe. resisting arrest, but that's, that's not Maybe, but matters. I don't even think he's, he's not a peace officer in the state of Nevada unless... So you get nothing. Anyway. Uh, unless they have some weird arrangement between the two states that I'm not familiar with. But in most weird. cases, cops from one state, they're not actually... They might be... If you're a Maryland cop, you're a Maryland cop. You're not actually a police officer in the state of Delaware. You're just Why a guy. Off duty? When you're off duty, you're off duty. Why? Anyways. Moving right along, Nick, I do want, we don't have too much time, but I do want to touch on this because I don't know how it's going to be possible to enforce a law like this or why a legislative body would bother writing anything like this because it's, it's so oppressive and it's, it's what it means would be so huge. And I, I, we got to report on it because we're going to see what happens later down, in the law, uh, down the line. But recently, a couple days ago, a new law went into effect that really could shake the way uh, Massachusetts' internet works. It has long been illegal in Massachusetts to provide minors with matter that is, quote, harmful to minors. This is uh, such as selling pornography to a minor, allowing them to come into an adult sex shop, selling them uh, bongs or tobacco products or anything like that, any of this illegal stuff. That's what the matter harmful to minors is. It's been on the books for a while. But in April, the harmful to minors law has been extended and updated. And rather than the law that was once just going after smutty books, films, pamphlets, pictures, plays, dances, and even statues with, you know, the little penis on it. Can't show that to minors. Uh, it's now been extended to the internets. With, quote, electronic mail, instant messages, text messages, and any other communication extended by means of use of the internet or wireless network, whether by computer, telephone, or any other device by the transfer of signs, signals, writing, images, sounds, data, intelligence of any nature transmitted in a whole or in part by wire, radio, electromagnetic, photo electro, uh, electronic or photo optical system is now also illegal. So what's that mean? Any website out there that has any content that could be deemed harmful to minors is now illegal in Massachusetts. So what's that mean? It, who's it up to? Is it the creators of the website? Well, yeah, I mean, is it the internet service provider? Is it the parents? And because the thing about the internet is, it, is anyone can though. go, it's, it, anyone can go on a computer, and this is what it means. The ACLU has stepped in and is suing, and this is why. A, it is enforceable on a case-by-case -case basis. It is not enforceable to everyone because any that would mean that half the okay. internet is now illegal what in Massachusetts. What I'm saying is, in, Mass in the state of Massachusetts, but you would also, I mean, the fact remains that, yeah, maybe if you're, maybe if you're actually the person publishing the website and you reside in the state of Massachusetts and they can show that a minor mm -hmm. visited it and there's, 
content that they, the state deems harmful, which can be pretty broad. But if it's somebody from another state, because obviously the whole world can access mm -hmm. A website from, that's put up by somebody in Massachusetts, or put up anywhere. Somebody in Maine can put well, up a website anywhere, in Mass. Anywhere. Right. So is it the internet well, is service Maine provider? Is Maine going to extradite to Massachusetts because well, no. of this strange law? But that's the thing. Is it now the internet service provider, though? So now are we going to be filtering the internet to everyone? There is no way to tell who is on the internet, how old they are, Unless what Massachusetts they actually gets are. its own domain name. Uh, or that, or I guess you could have a camera on every computer that uh, some guy, um, lots of guys in a room are checking to age verification. There's no way, it can't be done. What it really does, and this is what the ACLU is saying, is that any person who disagrees or objects with sexual content or other quote unquote harmful content on the internet could cause a speaker to be prosecuted under the act by having a minor also view the speech. So say you really don't like a website. But wouldn't they all also you have, have, wouldn't, but if you had a minor view the speech, couldn't they also get you under the harmful to minor law? I don't know. Because it seems like if you brought them in to view an image on a television screen under the old application of law, you would be providing that content too. So it seems like you'd actually expose yourself to the equal liability. Well, you could just See. have them be able to easily stumble across it, Nick. Well, I guess that's true. That's a but, very easy way to, oh, now that that site has now been viewed by a minor. They happen to stumble across it. Yes, we made it really easy. Now it's time to go after that person if they reside in Massachusetts or the internet service provider or something. What it means is this is Orwellian, Nick. This is unenforceable unless you're trying to go after a few people or shut down a few key websites from people who reside in Massachusetts. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. You don't want kids looking at harmful stuff on the internet. Talk to the parents. This is about the parents. This is a parental issue. The state does not need to be getting um, involved in it. If you're a bad parent that lets your kid look at crap on the internet, well, guess what? That's what you're going to reap. That's what your go kid is going to have. The state needs to butt out. I mean, give me a break. It's a, it is impossible to verify age. I mean, most a lot of websites that want to cover their butts, uh, a lot of times alcohol, even, even you know, large corporations, alcohol companies, tobacco companies, they'll ask whether you're 18 or 21. It's a box that says yes or no, oh. the, or enter your birth date. There's no way to verify. You, you People know. aren't going to give their social security numbers or anything that truly verifies them because you never know what kind of a website you're looking at. This is a nanny state feel good law that's only going to hurt a few people, harm, ruin people's lives, and needs to be taken off the books. Man, I feel bad for those people in Massachusetts. They've really got it rough. Anyways, you can always well, yeah, but somebody can, if you hate it. But people, they, Massachusetts may try to come after you if you run a website if you're in the state of New Hampshire. <laughs> I'm too. not that worried, Nick. I'm not that worried. Either. It would I, suck I, to be in Massachusetts. That's all. It's, all right. Yeah, that's going to do it for us. You have different thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Freemindsmedia.org or .com. From there, you can uh, click on the contact button. Probably the easiest way to get through uh, to us. Agree, disagree. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, until next week, it has been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good one.